What's happening, dogs? Mr. Allen here with an introduction to right triangle trigonometry, one of my favorite all-time topics of the geometry curriculum. So let's get after it, man. We got ourselves two right triangles here, and this interesting uh, like circle with the that's called theta. It's a Greek letter, and we use it as a variable in mathematics, often associated with angles. Theta, T H E T A. Theta, spelling bee champ. Boom. All right. So we have these two right triangles. They look pretty much like the same thing, right? Uh, except for this theta is in a different spot. Okay, so what kind of significance does that have? And then we've got these three different interesting things here. We got sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. Okay, that's how these read. Those are abbreviation, three letter abbreviations. It's not sin, cos, tan, it's sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. And these equal some ratios, okay? Now the ratio for sine, is the opposite side over its hypotenuse. Hmm. And the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? So where is this stuff, right? And last one here, tangent is opposite over the adjacent. So what the heck does this mean, man? Well, going back to the theta here, if we're talking about the sides of our triangle, when we look across from the theta, whoop, this is my opposite side. Next to theta, next to the angle, it helps form the angle. That is my adjacent side. And then across in the right, from the right angle here, in any right triangle, it's always the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse never changes. It's always across from the right angle. Cool. So I have my opposite, my adjacent, my hypotenuse. The same would go over here, except for now, across from this angle, this is my opposite side, this is my adjacent, and this one's still my hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at it from a different angle, the opposite and the adjacent flip-flop, but the hypotenuse remains the same, okay? So what do we do with this? Well, let's say I had some side lengths here of this triangle. I'm gonna say that this is gonna be, how about um, an eight right here for this one? I'll say that this is a 15. And we'll say that this is 17. Okay, it's an 8, 15, 17 Pythagorean triple. All right. Now, Pythag is still in play here. We're just learning new math. All right. More math, exciting stuff. Cool. So, what do we do with this? Well, for sine of theta, it's equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So, the opposite side here, so sine of theta in this example we just created, is 8 over 17. 8 divided by 17. Nice. The cosine is going to be my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So my adjacent is 15, hypotenuse is 17. So cosine of theta is going to be 15 over 17. And then the tangent is my opposite over my adjacent. So tangent of theta equals the opposite, which is 8, over the adjacent, which is 15. Cool. All right. So these types of questions are, you know, they ask you, what is the trig ratio? Or, or uh, answer the following trig ratios. The sine of theta is equal to my opposite of my hypotenuse. And you're just giving me the two numbers, that ratio right there. But let's say the same scenario is happening over in this triangle with this guy here being eight, this one being 15, and this one being 17. Well, now since I'm looking at it from a different angle, these ratios are going to change. The sine is now 15 over 17. So sine of theta equals 15 over 17. Cosine is my adjacent, which is 8, over my hypotenuse, which is 17. So cosine of theta equals 8 over 17. And then we have tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so 15 over 8. So the tangent, just like, it's like the reciprocal, right? From the other angle, those guys flip, so the whole, the fraction flips. If you look at sine and cosine, these are the same, these are the same. The name sine and cosine is significant. They are co-functions. It means that the sine of one angle is going to be equal to the cosine of that angle's complement. How the heck do I know these are complements? Well, if these are right angles, right, if it's a right triangle, the other two angles have to add to 90. So if we're saying that these two are congruent triangles here, and I'm just looking at it from this angle instead, all right, these two angles here, I know I have them labeled both with theta, um, but these two angles here are complements of each other, right? These two add to 90, these two add to 90. So then you end up seeing the same ratio there for the complement angles, okay? Kind of cool. 
neat stuff. Not a heavily important thing right now, but just a fun little fact about the naming scheme and stuff like that. All right, so these are our three basic trig functions here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And this would be asking you for the trig ratios. Now, this seems like a lot, right? Um, perhaps there's a, a nice way to remember these trig ratios, and there is. There's a nice acronym here, so ka toa so ka toa all right so sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse tangent is opposite over adjacent i would write that down on every trig test at the top man i got it tattooed on my uh my back of course you know no i don't but be a dope tattoo there we go okay so introduction to trig and you might be like well why what how would i use this right i'm just i'm just making fractions bro that seems kind of lame oh this is just the tip of the iceberg okay you can use trig to solve for missing sides and you can even figure out the angle measure that's pretty dope we could solve for this angle right here given the information about any two of these sides here and that's that's pretty powerful stuff man so in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to solve for angles, okay, and the scenarios that, that go with that. And then the third part, I'm going to show you how to solve for missing sides. All those are important, the three main parts of trig, all right? Sound good? Sound dope? Awesome. Stick around here. I'm going to clean this off, set up some new examples, and we're going to solve for missing angles. All right, so we're going to solve for a couple missing angles in these two triangles right here using some trigonometry. First thing I'm going to write down in this case here is our wonderful acronym SOKATOA. So -ka toa Boom. All right. I jot it down every time, man. That way I know which one to use. It helps me remember which one to use, okay? So here I have the angle theta, okay? The angle theta here. Now, this would be my opposite side. I know nothing about. This is going to be my adjacent side with respect to this angle. And this guy's my hypotenuse right here, okay? So adjacent, hypotenuse, which one of these three here uses adjacent hypotenuse? That's cosine, baby. All right, so I'm going to set up a trig function with cosine. So I have cosine of theta equals my adjacent of 6 divided by my hypotenuse of 21. But I want theta. And theta is stuck in this trig function. I can't, like, divide by cosine. That's not what's happening here. This is not cosine times theta. It's cosine of theta. But we have what's called inverse trig functions. And it's, if it's an inverse function, it's going to undo the function. Much like division is the inverse operation of multiplication. It will undo multiplication. Subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. It will undo that addition. So we can do the same thing here with our trig functions. So if I took the cosine inverse... Of this side, those guys are gone, leaving me with theta. But whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. I'm going to try and squeeze it in right here. If I take the cosine inverse of that side, now I have cosine inverse of 6 over 21. And I can plug this into my calculator, and it's going to spit out the angle measure here, which seems like magic. It's like mathematical magic. It's super cool, man. I'm pretty hyped about this stuff. All right, a couple things getting started here. First off, we got to make sure we're in the correct mode. So you're going to hit the mode button. It's up in the top left there. I want to make sure that I'm, boom, okay, there we go, mode. All right. Now, if I arrow down here after I hit mode, okay, mode is up by that second button, kind of the top left of your calculator. See how it's flashing on radian right there? If I was in radian, that'd be bad. I want to be over here on degree, okay? They each have their own purpose. Radian is a thing that you'll use later on in mathematics. But right now, we're in degrees, all right? We're trying to figure out what theta is in degrees. Is it 27 degrees? Is it 85 degrees? I don't know, okay? So make sure you're in degree mode, and then we can hit second quit. Again, hitting mode gets you to that menu. Make sure you're in degree mode. All right, cool. It even says up top there on some of the calculators, if you look up in the top gray there, it says degree up there, which is kind of nice. All right, so now I can type this into my calculator. If you look right in the, kind of the middle of your keyboard above the numbers, there's sine, cosine, and tangent. And then in little font above it, the second option is sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. It's not cosine negative one. That's just the notation for inverse. So I'll hit second cosine, and then I will type in six divided by, 12, uh, by 21. Close my parentheses, and I get 73.398. Okay, 73.398. Why would you say 73.4 degrees? That's pretty dang close. There we go, man. 
solve from a first angle there. That's awesome. All right. Next one. We've got theta. That would be my opposite side, right? Because it's across the triangle from it. And then, and then next to it would be my adjacent side. So which trig function should I use here? If I have my opposite and I have my adjacent and I want my angle, tangent. Now, quick thing here. I'm already going to go to a shortcut for you guys because it's super uh, useful here in trigonometry and most people get grasp it and doesn't lead to any mistakes. Do you think the same thing is going to like occur here? Like if I were to set up, check it out. If I were to set up tangent of theta equals my opposite, which is 5, over my adjacent, which is 12, wouldn't I just take the tangent inverse of it on both sides right away right that's going to get rid of that leave me with i'll write it in pink this time theta equals tangent inverse of 5 over 12 so perhaps we can go ahead and just say if i'm going to be solving for an angle and i know two sides i'm just going to plug that ratio into my inverse i think that's fair okay so if you're solving for an angle, use inverse trig. Let's write that down. If solving for an angle, use inverse trig. All right, when solving for an angle, we're gonna use inverse trig. Jot that down in your notes. It's super important, super helpful, and saves you a little bit of time. Now let's do the fun part. Let's type it in our calculator. Second tangent, five divided by 12, Close your parentheses. We get 22.6198. So 22.62 or 6 degrees. I guess we did a tenth on this one. We'll do one, one decimal place, one tenth on this one as well to be consistent. Look at that, man. That's awesome. Two trig functions solved for angles. That's awesome. Anybody know what this side length is right here? Just for fun. Just for fun. It's a 5, 12, 13 triangle oh snap pythagorean triple and check this out you ready for this i'm gonna go crazy i'm gonna go crazy that's my hypotenuse right could i do you think i'd get the same angle if i used a different trig function let's see if i were to use like the opposite and the hypotenuse here that'd be my sign right so if i did if i did sine inverse of my opposite which is five over 13 you think I'm going to get 22.6? Let's see. Second sine, 5 divided by 13. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's dope, man. All right, so, again, it shows, like, whatever information you have here, you got to make sure you pick the appropriate trig function. I could have gotten the same answer if I had three sides. I could have used any one of these three trig functions, gotten the same things. Check this out. Cosine inverse of 12 over 13. I'll put a million dollars down that it's going to be all the same thing. Dang. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Solve them for angles. That's dope. I got more examples of those in other videos if you need them. But after this one, I'm going to solve for some sides here, which honestly is probably the trickiest version of the geometry type trig that we're going to deal with. So stick around for that one. I'm going to clean this thing off, put a couple more examples on the board, and then we'll keep on mathing. All right, you guys, in these next two examples here, we are solving for missing sides. This one is a little bit easier than this one. You'll see why in just a moment. So first off, I'm going to jot down some Sokotoa, man. I'm, I'm going to do it in, in green up here this time. So, whoa, it's got some, some mix from canceling some things out. Sokotoa, boom, beautiful, fantastic. All right, now with this triangle right here, with respect to my 62-degree angle, what sides do I have? Right next to it, that's my adjacent. This guy across from my right angle, that's the hypotenuse. I'm hyped up about that one. All right, now let's set up a trig function, shall we? If, I'm, if I want my adjacent, I have my hypotenuse with respect to this angle, right? That's my adjacent. Cosine is the move on this one. All right, so cosine of 62 is equal to my adjacent x over my hypotenuse of 30. So let's solve this thing. Well... Pump the brakes for a sec here. I've got a fraction on the right-hand side, right? X divided by 30. I got cosine of 62. What is cosine of 62? Well, let's go ahead and plug this in. If I did cosine of 62 and hit enter, I'd get a decimal, 0.469, so pretty close to like a half, right? 0.5. So if I had like 0.5 equals this mess right here, how would you go about solving that normally? Well, I would just multiply this by 30 on each side, 
to get that x by itself, right? And then I'd have 30 times whatever that number was. So why don't we write that out here? 30 cosine of 62 equals x. And I can just type all of that into my calculator. Might be helpful to throw some parentheses around here, especially when you get a lot of numbers going on there. Helps keep things like cleaned up. So let's just type it in. 30 times cosine of 62. Cosine of 62. Close my parentheses. Bingo, bango. We get x equals 14.08. We'll say 14. Sure, we'll do, we'll do two decimal places in this one. 08. Feet. Nice. Excellent. That's awesome, man. So, pretty powerful stuff, right? If I have an angle and a side, now I can use trig to solve for a missing side. Whereas, like with Pythag, if I had two sides, I could solve for that third side. Still very much useful to have Pythag, right? This is just a new situation. Different information requires different math. So, they, you know, the ancient folk developed new math to solve new problems, and we continue to do that today. It's really it's just beautiful. All right. So there we go. We solve for X on that one. Now, important thing here, guys, is that um, we, you know, I said that the 0. 0.469 was pretty close to 0. 0.5. What if I just did 0. 0.5 times the 30? Like if I just like round it, right? I did 0. 0.5 times 30. I get 15. That's drastically different than 14.08 or even 14.1 if I rounded there, right? That's almost, it's an entire foot off almost, right? So rounding and then calculating with that rounded number and then rounding again, rounding twice one might say, that's not what's on the shirt here, all right? You only round once for mathematical accuracy purposes, okay? That's why I go by the law of YORO in these problems because it can mess things up. It doesn't always. Sometimes it's really, really close regardless if you round it a couple times. But just to be safe, you only round once, okay? Remember that. Remember that. All right, next one here. Slightly more complicated uh, algebra here on this one is what happens, but you're going to see why. So for with respect to the 28 here, this is my opposite side, right? This guy's still my hypotenuse. It's crossing the right angle. So let's set up a trig function with the opposite and the hypotenuse, which would be sine. So I'll say sine of my angle 28. I'll throw it into parentheses here equals my opposite, which is 16, over my adjacent, which is x, or sorry, over my hypotenuse, which is x. So if you see here in this example, x is in the denominator, whereas in this one, it was in the numerator. How do I deal with this? Well, how did I get the 30 out of the denominator? I had to multiply by 30. So we have to do the same thing here, but now I'm multiplying by x. And I can't just type in x times sine of 28 in my calculator. That's not going to give me some kind of an answer. Actually, it will give you an answer because x is stored as some value in your calculator. Um, you just don't really know what that value is or it's the last thing you did. So it will give you an answer, but it won't give you the right answer. All right. So I still have to continue doing some algebra here. Well, we did say that like cosine of 62 is just a number, right? Sine of 28 is also just a number. So if I were to, that's really, really close to, that's the exact, we're going to come back to that. We're going to come back. Actually, no, I'm gonna do, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Okay. Um, so sine of 28 um, is just some number, right? 0.469. It's almost like 0.5, right? Very close. So if I were to divide by whatever that number is, meaning divide by sine of 28, divide by sine of 28 on both sides, this is gone. And now I'm left with x equals 16 divided by sine of 28. We'll just type that into my calculator. 16 divided by sine of 28. And I get 34. Hopefully we can still see this. Let me see here on my, on my watch. I can see. I think we can fit it. x equals 34.08 feet. Boom. We fit it. All right. Nice. So there we go, man. Solved for a missing side. So you really have these two different scenarios of algebra. If the x is in the denominator, you're going to multiply by x, divide by the sine. Here, you can just multiply by the number that's in your denominator. Be careful going to the shortcuts. A lot of people are like, oh, so I'm either going to just multiply or I'm going to divide, blah, 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 blah. They try to remember these things and they mix things up. Show some algebra. Generally speaking, your teacher's going to want to see some work anyways, and it'll help you remember the process in case things get a little bit more complicated. But back to this whole thing of the cosine of 62 and the sine of 28 equaling the same exact decimal, okay? This was not planned, but this is a beautiful way to end this long video here on trigonometry. If you're still with me, if you remember back, we were talking about 
how these sine and cosine functions are named accordingly because they are co-functions of each other. And the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of said angle's complement. What do you know about 62 and 28? They add up to 90. They are complementary angles. So the sine of 28 is equivalent to the cosine of 90 minus 28, which is 62. I mean, if that doesn't make you excited, I, I, don't, I don't know what will. That probably doesn't excite you as much as it excites me. But I think that's pretty dang dope, all right? So hope you guys enjoyed the uh, wonderful little introduction to trigonometry here. There's one last thing, actually, that I want to write now that I'm thinking of it. What kind of trick did we use here when solving for a side? We used regular trick, okay? So when solving for an angle, we use the inverse. When solving for a side, when solving for a side, we use regular trig. Cool, awesome. And that's of course if we have a side and an angle, regular trig to solve for the side. If I got two sides and I want the angle, inverse trig. All right. That's it, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for so much for sticking around if you're here all, you know, throughout the entire video. I know it was a long one, but it's a lot of fun. Trig is fantastic. Got some application problems in this playlist as well for you guys, so make sure to check that out because it's super dope. See you later.